organizations lose about two hours a day of productive time to overly long meetings, to tech distractions, to you know people coming over asking just that one quick question. I was thinking about our meetings and the length of our meetings. So the mm -hmm. length of our meetings is around 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. And in the sales meetings, even the partner meeting, once a month, 30 minutes. Uh, and weekly review. So we have lots of meetings for 30 minutes, 25 minutes, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I think, it's, which is interesting, the only meetings, regular meetings, that are longer one hour, two hours, are meetings alone. So we have also meetings where just one person does something, but it's a meeting. For mm. example, the CEO uh, has, has a couple meetings. So I have the thinking time, which is a meeting of 60 minutes every day. Okay. Walking sometimes I do it running, but it's thinking time. So I have one problem that I have to decide one big thing. Uh, I, I calculate and spreadsheet until to a point but then there is the thinking time which is 60 minutes and and then i come back and take the decision so mm -hmm. that's the thinking time and um if i do not have a specific problem to solve then there is one question that i ask myself and i ask myself if we would 10x what i would change or i ask myself if i would step out and get a much better ceo much smarter much more experienced than I am. What would she do? <laughs> what would she do? Mm -hmm. And then I go just running in picture and try to figure out well, what would she do? Mm. And um, so that's working on the business basically. And, and then right. and the other one, which is two hours, is the CEO financial review, where I have just to do the finances of, um, of yeah, basically of everything, you know, the estimation of where we're going, what, what can I do with the profitability, all this equalizer thing about finances. And um, so where can we put some innovation budget, et cetera, uh, in what to reinvest, et cetera. And, the, and that's two hours, but it's one person doing deep work. Right, you know, I think, I, I have not heard of places describing those things as meetings, but I think it's, you know, from, from a scheduling standpoint, it makes great sense. Do you want to make your sales more repeatable and reliable? Do you want to have less volatility and more growth in your revenue per month? At Strategy Sprints, we do only one thing, strategy and sprints. Strategy means having more revenue through a better offer. And sprints means having more energy in your team every week. Check out if your ROI is as high as it is for most service-based and online businesses and startups we work with, which is over 100%. You can see it in just 15 minutes by going to strategysprints.com slash sales and completing our online exercise to know what your ROI would be with our accelerator program. We are ready to sprint. Are you? Um, and I think, you know, that the, uh, you know, first of all, um, there are, there is research that shows that organizations lose about two hours a day of productive time to overly long meetings, to tech distractions, to, you know, people coming over asking just that one quick question that turns into 20 minutes. And if you can get a handle on those things, you can go a long way to making, it, making yourself and your organization more productive, creating more time for focused work, and creating you know, time uh, and saving enough time so that you, know, you, can, you can move to a four-day week. So I think I mean, all of these things, all of these things are, you know, are uh, sort of are are great to hear about. And I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest the idea of thinking of, you know, one person meetings, um, or of- Meeting with yourself. Yeah, yeah we yeah. call it a meeting because right. we make explicit that one person working that 
this is a very serious chunk of deep work. We call it a meeting with oneself because if you don't put it as a meeting in your calendar, you won't do it in that disciplined, focused manner because mm -hmm. you will let other stuff slip into your calendar. Mm -hmm. No, you know, what I think is really great about that is that we, you know, it takes what is good, what is good about meetings, you know, that they have a purpose, they have, uh, you know, they have particular outcomes, they suggest at their best, a level of preparation and seriousness that, you know, in reality, often does not happen. But, you know, translating them into, but using the translating them into personal things and, and using that framework to do your own work is, I think that's a, that's a really nice idea. Uh, one more thing that helped us get into more flow, we are working remote since day one, so, mm -hmm. and uh, over three continents. And um, what helped us getting into more flow is that every meeting, even the very short ones, they start first with magic moments, so what went really well, Mm -hmm. uh, which is a very short round, but it helps raise the energy in the room and the presence for everybody. And then we go to hard KPIs, quantitative. So mm -hmm. what's, what's the reality saying about what we think? Right. Uh, <laughs> we go through the numbers, uh, number of people that called because they heard the podcast, numbers of revenue, really, really the numbers. And, um, and that gives us, uh, to me, the metaphor is, you know, Angry Bird, the, uh, the, the game. The video game, yeah. The video game where you get immediate response. Okay, that was 500 points. That was 800 points. That was mm -hmm. 1,000 points. You don't want to have the, this loop closed three weeks later. Like, it, it, when I was in bigger companies, I heard that people wait for two months until they get to report about the finances. You know, I... Right. I want the finances in real time. I want them now. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what we try to do, to, to close the loop in real time immediately. Mm -hmm. because you feel what you're doing. You know if your assumption is matched by the outside reality, by the market. And then you right. get either more energy to double down on that, or you get the very important disillusionment, which is it is important to you, but to nobody else in the world to stop it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that um, especially in, you know, in today's world and in industries where you are often doing, you know, project-based work where either time, where timelines are long and sometimes where the standards aren't a hundred percent clear, you know, of what constitutes either success or being finished, you know, in contrast to working in a factory where, the whistle, you know, the whistle blows and you know you're done and you can look at the, you know, how many widgets you've turned out that day and you've, you've either done well or not. And I think that having in, you know, especially in creative and in service companies, having those opportunities for that kind of real-time feedback is a super valuable thing. And one of the things that I hear about things like the four-day week is that, you know, it provides a wonderful quick feedback about you know, whether, you know, about how well efforts to make work more productive, to make meetings, you know, more focused, to use technology better are working or not. Because by Thursday afternoon, either all of these things make it possible for everybody to go home or they haven't. You know, it's not the case that these are you know, organizational change initiatives that will play out six months from now and maybe affect stock price. They play out by, you know, our ability to have a three-day weekend or not. And that I think is, you know, especially in a world where our decisions can be, you know, or uh, where it's often difficult to, me to measure quality, to see how our work has an impact, you know, to be able to, you know, to be able to see after a couple of days, how well things are working, 
um, and to be able to make adjustments and course corrections so that we can stay on track. That is super important and it's also, and you know, is super rewarding both in terms of time savings, but also in terms of psychological satisfaction and happiness. Absolutely. We, we say that we, we are always trying to manage ourselves that we are a responsible and responsive company. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Responsible really just means are we doing the right thing? Right. Uh, but, but responsive means we want to have real time response about what we're doing. If this is really helpful for somebody out there or not, mm -hmm. what's the impact? Is it, is it really positive for somebody and is it moving stuff forwards for them? or just not, then let's stop wasting our time. And uh, then it was, okay, it was a, our assumption, but it is mm -hmm. validated. Mm -hmm. And we work really with assumptions in the knowledge field, and we just don't take it seriously enough, like as, as scientists uh, do, to write them down and to really test them and validate, mm -hmm. and validate them. That's really interesting because, you know, another thing that, um, companies that move to four day weeks do is they take a very experimental kind of design thinking mindset. Um, you know, there is an awful lot of talk of prototyping, you know, whether it's prototyping new ways of working, prototyping meetings, prototyping schedules. And the reason that that kind of language is really valuable is that, you know, prototypes are meant to be improved on. They're meant to be, you know, taken apart and put back together. Right. And sometimes, you know, if they don't work, they're meant to be abandoned and replaced with something else. And so, you know, I think that the, you know, that design thinking kind of approach and mindset is another way of getting at what you guys also do and what you encourage your companies to do. Absolutely. We all know that working in sprints is better, but how do we know what we should work on? You're in luck because we have a 15 minute exercise that will give you complete clarity on where to take your project next. Go to strategysprints.com slash sales to complete our short exercise and meet one-on-one -on -one with an expert sprint coach to identify your number one bottleneck. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the strategy show. Make sure to like this video below and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with every episode of The Strategy Show. Get daily CEO tips from CEOs for CEOs.